what I want to do here is look at some of the derivative and integral properties of the poly logarithm. And so let's just remind ourselves real quick that the poly logarithm li sub s of z is given by this series and equaling one to infinity z to the n over n to the s. And so the first question that I'm going to ask is just uh, what happens when you take a derivative of the poly logarithm? What do you get? Well, let's take a look. So we want to take ddz li sub s of z, right? And this is going to be um, really just a, a derivative on each term in the series, right? So we're going to be applying this derivative to each of these z's here. And what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get still a sum from n equals 1 to infinity, but we're going to pull down this n. And when we pull down this n, what's going to happen? We're going to have z to the n minus 1 over n, and this n is going to be on top, so that means this is going to be n to the s minus 1. Um, okay, uh, that's all fine and dandy, but how is this related to um, stuff that we already know? I mean, is there a way that we could rewrite this in terms of an ordinary poly logarithm? Uh, well, uh, there is. I mean, let's, let's, let's notice for a second that if we... If we, uh, if we had a z right here, so if we had an extra factor of z on every term, uh, then this would just be our normal definition of the poly logarithm, but with this s being moved to s minus 1. And so what this means is that uh, this derivative of our poly logarithm can actually be written as 1 over z, getting this to the bn minus 1, times poly log s minus 1 of z. And I'll now rewrite this down here. Uh, so this right here is is an important poly logarithm property because it, it tells you that uh, if you if you take the derivative of your poly logarithm, uh, then you don't really have to do any work. You just say, all right, well, one over z, and then shift your poly logarithm down by one, shift this s down by one, and you've got it. Um, okay, so that's great. Um, but this right here also, uh, I mean, this this immediately gives us something else for free, right? Because then we can say, well. I mean, we, we, we know loosely how to invert derivatives, right? We can integrate both sides. And in particular, if we integrate both sides from 0, and I'll, and I'll say to z, so uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll introduce t as this dummy variable. If we have something that's like this, where we're integrating both sides from 0 to some point, and, uh, then minus 1 of t dt over t. What can we say about this left-hand term right here? Well, we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus that this thing is just going to be equal to li sub s of z, right? And that's equal to this right-hand side, li s minus 1 of t dt over t. And then, so, so this right here is already an interesting integral property, but if we wanted to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift s by one, up by 1 in both cases. So if you shift s up by 1, then you get li s plus 1 of z equals same integral, just li sub s of t dt over t. Uh, and so this is a little bit nicer because what this tells us is that starting with our poly logarithm, um, with its with it being just sub s, if we take an integral of that, dividing by t, then uh, we we effectively just shift our poly logarithm up by one in s, and so these two these two properties right here are going to be uh, really important when we study the poly logarithm for a variety of reasons. First, because it's going to allow us to um, jump between different forms of the poly logarithm. So for example, if we know um, li sub s equal 1 or s equals 0, then we'll instantly know how to get to minus 1 or minus 2 or, or, or minus 3. Um, and likewise, with this property down here, we know how to get back up to, to 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So that's useful. And this is also useful because in a, in a lot of tough integrals that you have to do, sometimes with trigs or, or logs showing up, if you can reformulate the question in terms of a poly logarithm, then you can do some type of integration by parts where you rewrite the integral in some form that maybe looks like uh, this guy down here, where you have a poly logarithm divided by some by by your variable, 
And then when you do integration by parts, a function which you originally didn't know how to integrate becomes something that you can integrate. And when you integrate it, you get something else that you know, which is another polylogarithm. Um, but I think I think I'll stop here. These are really the core um, the core properties when it comes to differentiating and integrating your polylogarithm. And in the next video, I'll start looking at some applications of these. So I hope to see you there.